If you have a stroke or a heart attack, you'd expect an ambulance to arrive in just a few minutes. But the average wait time is now more than an hour. People dialing 999 with serious but less life-threatening emergencies can end up waiting for hours on end, not just for an ambulance to turn up, but in one, if, as is often the case, there is a queue of ambulances waiting to get into accident emergency. These long waits matter. They're having a dangerous impact on patient safety. BBC Analysis has found a 77% rise in the most serious safety incidents logged by paramedics in England over the past year, compared to the same period before the COVID pandemic. Our health correspondent Jim Reid now reports. Why is it going off? There you go. Okay, it works now. Willow Clark is back from school and practising her scales again. Should I start now? Just 10 years old, she's still recovering after a serious accident a few months ago. I remember just lying down on my mum's lap, like, we needed to go to the hospital as soon as possible. She was on a bike ride with her mother Sam when she fell badly, splitting her cycling helmet and fracturing her skull. I said, help, I can't breathe. That's all I said, that's all I just came to my mind. Yeah, she was screaming for help. And we couldn't really move her because she, she was in a real mess, like, like a car accident rather than a bike accident. But when Sam asked a passerby to call an ambulance, she was told it would be a 10-hour wait, well above the two hours it should take at most for an accident like this. Her father had to drive over a field to get her to hospital. So when we got there, as soon as they realised how serious it was, she got rushed straight in. We kept getting told by consultants that we should not have moved her because her back and her neck injuries could have been quite severe. How did you feel about that when you were told? It's very disappointing because uh, it's the first time I've ever had to phone for an ambulance in my whole entire life and I've got four children. And so when I really needed it, it wasn't there to help and it should be. Across the whole UK, though, ambulance response times have been rising sharply over the last year. In England, life-threatening cases should be seen within seven minutes. In March, the average was over nine minutes. For so-called Category 2 emergencies, like strokes or heart attacks, the target is 18 minutes. The average is now over an hour. You can see now 23 ambulances with patients in the back of them waiting to go in. This is a big part of the problem. At this hospital in the Midlands, nearly two dozen ambulances were queuing up at one point this week, waiting to drop off patients. The NHS is dealing with a record number of 999 calls as life returns to normal after the pandemic. Hi, I'm David Davis. I'm a paramedic from the south of England and I'm a spokesperson for the College of Paramedics. It's beyond the impact of being frustrating. Just stood there, either in the ambulance or in the queue to hand over for hours and hours is a really bad experience. And then to know that there are people who need you to be there for them right there, right now, and you can't be there, it has a negative, both professional and psychological impact on many of us. The concern is those delays will have a knock-on effect on safety. The BBC has obtained data from NHS safety reports submitted when a patient could have died or been permanently harmed. There were 551 serious incidents reported by ambulance staff in England in the last year, nearly 80% more than the same period before the pandemic. I took one step and was actually falling towards the shed. But even less critical cases can be traumatic. 81-year-old Carol Potter fell in her garden, leaving her on the floor with a dislocated shoulder. All of a sudden, my whole body just went. Again, an ambulance should have arrived within two hours. It took almost twice as long as that. The one thing it has done is completely not my confidence. I'm frightened to walk round to Tesco's on my own. I just can't do it. So it's interfered with my life completely. The NHS says it's working hard to free up hospital beds and see more patients quickly. The government says it's providing billions of pounds to deal with the treatment backlog in England. Doctors and paramedics, though, say too many people who need emergency care are still left waiting. Jim Reid reporting there and listening to that is the president of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, Dr Catherine Henderson. Good morning to you. How serious is this situation compared with the years of problems you've no doubt witnessed during your career? This is more serious than we've ever seen it. We've never broken the commitment to being able to get an ambulance to a patient in a timely way. It's part of the NHS constitution that we will get 
care in emer to emergency patients without unnecessary delay. And this is the first time in my career, over 20 years as a consultant, where that has become a serious issue. So serious that if, God help us, you had a loved one who needed to dial 999 or you on their behalf, would you fear for them? I would be worried whether it would be possible to get an ambulance to them in a timely way. I would be looking very carefully at what alternatives I had, but we shouldn't have to do that. Just, just let me be... interrupt and just check what you mean when you say alternatives. You mean that people should now not rely on 999? And in certain situations, they might, what, have to grab a taxi or drive people in themselves? Exactly. I mean, if, if, if it's, I think at the moment... We are seeing an increasing number of patients who are making their own way to hospital, which means that our walk-in queue is now no longer patients who've managed to walk in. They may be patients who should have come by ambulance. So that makes it more difficult for us to know who's in the queue, how serious those patients are. Paramedics are very skilled at helping us prioritise. And so a patient who has arrived by ambulance and has been treated by highly skilled paramedics, we know a lot about them. A lot of their initial treatment may have started. And now we've got the problem that we will know that some patients are arriving by a different route and we need to be very, very vigilant. But we've got big queues. We can't get flow out of our departments. The reason there is this problem, the underlying reason, is that emergency departments are absolutely packed. We're expecting to see um, performance data uh, later on today. And if we look at the number of patients who are having long stays in the department, you'll see how much that has increased over the last year. So that's, that's where the bottleneck is, is it? That, that once you're in accident emergency, if you get out of that ambulance, if it comes, the problem is there's not a bed for people to go to. We sometimes start the morning with more patients waiting to go up to the ward than cubicles that we have, and that's at the beginning of the day. We can't then get new patients in because we have no space. We end up with patients in corridors. We end up with patients in any clinical area that we can manage to put them. We need to get flow back into our emergency departments and get patients moved up onto the wards. Dr Catherine Henderson, President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, thank you. The time now is 